Hello. So in this video, we're going to talk about Antigone Project, a play in five acts. Um, so this is a multi-piece, very loose adaptation of Sophocles' Antigone. Um, it, as the title suggests, is written in five different pieces, five short plays by five different playwrights. Um, so we have Hang Ten by Karen Hartman, Medallion by Tanya Barfield, Antigone Arke by Caridad Svich, A Stone's Throw by Lynn Nottage, and Red Again by Chiori uh, Miyagawa. This, uh, the Antigone Project was started shortly after the passage of the Patriot Act in 2001, which vastly expanded the powers of the U.S. government to surveil both citizens and non-citizens. Um, the authors of the plays picked up Antigone as part of this sort of broader trend of using the Antigone story to explore issues of resistance, individual freedom, etc., etc. Um, but they, in each part, they relocate Antigone to a different context, a different point in history, um, and and they develop different concerns or conceptions, different readings of the Antigone myth. Um, so I actually think the, the best sort of description of the Antigone project comes in Svitch's play um, Antigone Arche. Uh, she says, in the blur of history, in the chaos of memory, words are broken, fragmented, heard anew. So that's what we have over the course of these five plays, is we have a a myth that's broken, fragmented, and heard anew through these different methods of exploring Antigone's story. Um, so in Hang Ten, the first play of this of this sequence, um, Antigone and Ismene are sitting on a beach and they're sort of admiring these surfers, but for Antigone especially, and to a lesser extent for Ismene, this is a weird sort of tension between attraction to the, the surfers and repulsion, because apparently in this version, is not entirely clear what happened, but some variation of um, Antigone and Ismene's brothers died surfing, surfing accidents, whatever it is. So it's not really clear what happened. Um, and there are references to them being under surveillance, but it's not really clear why that is either. Um, so we've got that sort of tension there. In Medallion by Tanya Barfield, um, we have Antoinette Thebes, who is the Antigone figure, who goes in, this is um, set during World War I. Um, Antoinette is African-American. She goes into the office of General Clayton, who's Creon, uh, because her brother has been killed in action uh, fighting in France. Um, because he's African-American, the U.S. government refuses to issue any sort of medal commemorating his service or the fact that he died in action. Uh, and so that's sort of the tension of the play, is Antoinette wants something to bury. The U.S. military hasn't bothered to attempt to retrieve her brother's body. Uh, he was awarded a medal by the French, but it was lost in shipping. And so Antoinette wants something to bury in commemoration of her brother, and she attempts to convince uh, Carlton to, uh, to give her a medal on behalf of her brother so that she can bury that 
and have closure. And he refuses because uh, he was African-American. Antigone Arcade by Switch is a sort of multimodal experimental type performance piece. Um, it's very interested in the ways in which memory is constructed through archives, through museums and things like this. Um, so we've got, it's, it's in a way a sort of encount, an audi the audience encounters a sort of theatrical museum of the Antigone story and particularly of Antigone's death. Um, so we've got, for instance, an archivist, we've got exhibits, um, the belt that Antigone used to hang herself, the, the cave in which she was confined, etc., etc. We've got digital displays, we've got um, historical uh, recordings of Antigone speaking into a, a, a tape recorder and things like this. So it's very much about the sort of mediated ways in which history or myth in this case is received. A Stone's Throw by Lynn Nottage. Um, this is set in, it's not exactly clear, but it, my sense is that it's set in um, a West African Muslim community. Um, but it's a very, whatever, it, wherever it is geographically, wherever it is religiously, this is a very conservative patriarchal society. Um, and Antigone is a single mother, an unmarried mother, for which the penalty is being stoned to death. But Antigone refuses to accept that she has done anything wrong. And so that's the conflict of the play there is, again, this confrontation with an unjust law. Um, and then read again by, uh, by Miyagawa is, I actually think one of the, I, I think might be my favorite of these five parts. Um, there's two big components. One is that um, Antigone and Harold, who is... Haman um, meet in the underworld and they discuss their personalities, they discuss the potential for their relationship to have been successful, um, they talk about their competing approaches to um, changing the world, uh, they talk about ethics, things like this. But you've also got Irene Ismene, uh, who's still in the land of the living, and basically her role, she calls the police to report the bodies of um, Antigone and Harold, who have killed themselves. But it, Irene's, and I, I love Ismene anyway, I'm fascinated by, by this character regardless, but in Miyagawa's version, um, in Red Again, Irene is continually mentioning these military engagements or sort of occupations, things like this. Um, so the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, um, being sent to concentration camps during the Holocaust, um, the internment of the Japanese during World War II, the evacuation of Saigon in 1974 by the US military, uh, the invasion of Afghanistan, uh, in 2001, all of these things get sort of jumbled up as though they're occurring simultaneously. So it's a really interesting approach to an anti-war position. And of course, the whole thing, the Antigone Project, all five parts, is anti-war, anti-surveillance, um, anti-sort of authoritarian control of the population, etc., etc. Um, so, but I, I think um, I think Red again is is one of the most interesting ones because Irene jumbles all of these events so that they seem like they're occurring simultaneously um, along with the mythic deaths of 
uh, Antigone and Harold. <laughs>